Have you ever heard about dialogical teaching? It is quite a modern concept of education, but at the same time it is quite old. Let me tell you about Martin Buber, a scientist, a philosopher, a thinker, and a little bit of theologist as well, who developed a theory of dialogue that can be applicable in early childhood education for early childhood education um, teachers alike. So who was Martin Buber? Martin Buber was an influential Jewish philosopher uh, and I came across him while preparing for my PhD research that I haven't finished but I started and I delved into dialogical teaching a lot and dialogical thinking and dialogical facilitation. So Buber is well known for his philosophy of dialogue and his exploration of nature of relationships. Particular, I'm going to unpack some key ideas of his book that is called I and Though or I and You uh, or Man to Man and other translation. So this book is fantastic and it's on my list of the books to read. However, if you are interested in just getting the key ideas, this video will help you as an early childhood educator and teacher to improve your teaching delivery, teaching practice, and most importantly, your relationships with children, with parents, and with other educators. If you are into mindfulness, you also will find Martin Buber ideas quite relevant. Let's get started. So why I'm even talking about Martin Buber on my channel? Uh, as I was saying, I came across his approach a long time ago while doing my certificate in research, education research, that is a bridging program that is leading to PhD or other research degrees. So I was interested in uh, supporting online facilitation through dialogical teaching or dialogue. The theory of dialogue came across as one of the key methods and I was planning to research online forums and how we facilitate uh, delivery, but then I changed my mind and decided that I prefer to work and do other projects. So as an online tertiary teacher, I'm quite interested in improving my interactions with students and also interactions between the students. Uh, as a classroom face-to-face -face trainer, I'm always interested in how to maintain this um, dialogue as well and how to involve my students and engage them. Not to mention when I'm working with children, I'm all ears and I try to be as present as I can and have this dialogue with even babies and toddlers because that's where all the learning is happening and relationships at the core of our teaching in early childhood and any other teaching indeed. So one day I thought um, he must have something uh, for us um, uh, early childhood educators that we can benefit from. And I was right. So let's see what can we learn from this wonderful philosopher, Martin Buber. So number one idea is dialogue. So dialogue is fantastic idea, as you can imagine. It's about interacting, it's reciprocal, it's two ways. So as opposed to monologue, when you are talking at people or by yourself. So be aware that Buber is quite a complex philosopher. Um, he is a philosopher. Most philosophers, they don't really speak in simple language. So his concepts um, might be a little bit complex, but uh, as you know, I try my best to explain complex um, in a simple way. So I hope that some key ideas will be summarized well. The second concept that I really like apart from the dialogue is encounter. Encounter is quite popular in one of the units that I'm facilitating. It's uh, nature pedagogy, so it's about bush kinders, forest schools, and also introducing these nature pedagogies in all other programs. Encounter is a term that we use for, um, let's say, meeting nature, right? So um, not just looking at the tree, but uh, having this encounter with the tree. I know it sounds a little bit meta, but beware. He's a philosopher. Stay with me and I hope it will make sense with examples. So Buba uh, wrote the book that is called I and Thou or I and You um, or Man to Man, where he introduced his thesis on human existence 
um, drawing on the other philosopher, Feerbach, who was German, the existence of Christianity. And the other philosopher, Kierkegaard, a uh, single one. Yep, I had to study all of them <laughs> during my philosophy degree, uh, five years. Uh, but it's not as complex as it looks uh, once you start unpacking it and delving into it a little bit more. But it's, of course, worthy. So existence or our life is encounter, according to Buba. So using these um, words that he used in this book, uh, ich du or I you and ich es or I eat in English, uh, can help to describe conscientious interaction and being when we relate to each other or when we relate to resources in our classrooms or when child relates to another child or when child encounters nature so there are many ways to experience that so and that's part of life and of course as a philosopher uh, martin buba was interested in understanding how it works for example what you can see on this picture is uh, me and the other child we have this snail right so and we encounter this snail and i'm holding it gently to pass it on to the child's hand uh, because i respect the snail as a creature so i don't treat it as an object i don't pick it up and throw in the bean or i'm crushing it or i'm just treating it without thinking that it's a living creature so we are seeing the encounter of the snail by both of us by child and me and this is pretty much the dialogue um, or encounter that Martin Buber was talking about. So it can be as simple as this kind of encounter with the world, with the child, between child and educator. It's true, it's living, it's authentic, and as opposed to manipulating, using, and treating the snail as an object. So it's really relevant to nature pedagogies, Bushkin, as I was saying, but also any other interactions that we have. Let's delve into it a little bit more. So Buba was born in Vienna, hence he used German terms. Uh, ich du means, um, I would say, I, you, yeah? Uh, and it's a relationship that uh, is focusing on, um, I would say, reciprocity, real encounter, being present, holistic existence, uh, mutuality, uh, between two beings yes so as you could discover it could be between a snail and a child or two children or uh, a child and an educator uh, it's a concrete encounter where individuals meet in their authentic existence and they don't objectify each other i think that's really easy to understand so when we object objectify uh, let's say another person we manipulate them we use them right so there is an expression you are using me so if you think about children, children quite often used uh, as cute creatures. So cuteness is used as objectification of children. Children are used in their ads, so as pets, because they are cute. But if we are really encountering children, we would believe, like in Reggio Emilia philosophy, that they do have rights and we cannot objectify them because there is a true encounter of beings and it's mutual so hence they have rights and we need to ask them if they um would give us permission let's say to take a picture or uh put them on the screen and we also will question our practices through this lens of relationships so he stressed that uh ich do or i you relationship uh is um important because it um helps us to create this uh meeting of two souls it's a dialogue it's meeting it's encounter and it happens in this moment while if we let's say treat the cat or a tree or a child as an object obviously this doesn't happen because it is objectifying the other being um, I found this idea quite relevant to the early childhood context. For example, in Bushkin, the children may view nature as an object, like um, to play uh, with, all right? So like logs to run on, uh, stones to throw, um, like, I don't know, plants to break, uh, birds to, again, torture, and worst case scenario, torture animals, kick them. So that's horrible, right? So it's where encounter didn't happen. So this is relationship I, 
eat. Yeah. While if we treat nature and other living beings like bugs and um, bees as living thing, then encounter might happen. Yeah. Uh, as you can see here on the picture, the child is encountering nature. So they are respectful, they're curious, but they also are gentle and they are present. Uh, I eat relationship treats beings as objects and um, you're not really experiencing uh, this encounter because you are experiencing the object. So you're using nature. So it's also more like a monologue rather than dialogue. So you... Um, obviously are not really meeting this other thing, right? And according to Buba, this is really prevalent in our society. So uh, it is really bad, obviously, according to him, because we consume. Yes, yeah, so uh, consumerism is quite a uh, common philosophy and way of life. So we consume things, we consume people, we consume TV, and sometimes we treat children the same way. So we look at them as, let's say, clients in long day care. Uh, we don't really experiencing this authentic connection. Uh, it could happen with um, educators as well. They might not connect with each other at this human level. While it's very, very important to start building these relationships and this requires presence. And according to Buba, although he lived long time ago, you can imagine that our time would be lacking this presence, this sense of presence, mainly because of that, right? Um, and um, we are busy, we are anxious, we are absent-minded, but we also are kind of connected to everything, but disconnected from each other. So being present is the gift that you as a teacher can give to your colleagues, to children. Uh, ask children about their weekend, about their interests, about their t-shirt, about whatever they brought, uh, about their backpack, and of course about their ideas, thoughts, feelings. But also sometimes just being in this space with a baby and holding this space is what Buber uh, calls a dialogue. So think about it and let me know what you think and whether you like this idea or not. In a busy classroom environment, it's hard to truly listen to children. So making time to pay attention to what they're doing, what they're saying. For example, it could be one-on-one -on -one when you sit next to two children playing and just watch them. Or when you play the game, I know you need to scan the room, but you still are trying to be as present as possible. Uh, and you catch yourself doing absent-mindedness like I always do or monological type of teaching when you talk at children instead of having this dialogue instead of being present instead of noticing can really really improve your practice especially if you start writing it in your reflective diary yeah so every night after you finish teaching for the day you can sit for five minutes and reflect what were the moments when I really encountered children? Uh, what were the moments when I, I would say, experienced, used or manipulated them? Uh, same uh, refers to your interactions with nature, interactions with your children, with your partner, etc. But professionally, you can think of those moments of dialogue that happened. So the other concept that I wanted to talk about is uh, his uh, focus on the relations, right? So Buber philosophy of dialogue aligns with contemporary theories of early childhood that I cover a lot in my channel, um, channel videos. So for example, he talks about the important role of emotional bond between children and their caregivers or teachers for healthy social emotional development. He says that the role of teacher is super important, it's even spiritual. Uh, we need to have unique qualities that other people do not have. And what I really liked about his philosophy was that it's not just a job, it's uh, a profession, it's a calling. So this requires you to understand that while children can choose sometimes who to play with, you have children that enrolled in your class. And hence, you have moral obligations and commitment. So think about it, how important our job is, and this requires full presence. And I think a lot of people don't really understand that. And they don't really understand the load that we have, the mental load as early childhood teachers or teachers in general. 
So think about this relationality and how it is mentioned in the new EYLF 2.0. They even call it relationality. And now you see why I brought up Buba to the equation and why we are talking about his philosophy. Let's apply all this to early childhood education. So in early childhood education, educator, educators can foster IU relationships, uh, this true encounter relationships or dialogical teaching by engaging authentically with children, valuing their words, their perspectives, documenting it, uh, also creating environment that does promote all this and promote mutual respect and empathy. A lot of centers are trying to create this um, environment and it takes time. But also the first important step is to be present, to pay attention. I'm going to talk more about attention because as a person with a little bit of deficit of attention, I do have to do it like, you know, a switch on and off. So basically what I have to do is like switch my attention and turn it off. Because if I'm not doing it, it's not automatic. Um, sometimes I have to make an effort to be present. So basically to make myself more present yeah, than I am. So um, that's something that you can think of. Listen to children more with more presence with, would be the first step towards this dialogical uh, teaching and learning. Also, you can think of the principle of the EYLF, responsive, respectful relationships with children and quality area five of national quality framework that talks about the relationships with children. Can you truly build respectful relationships if you are not listening to someone? Um, in the relationships that I had, whenever I was not listening, people will point it out and will say, you're not listening to me. You don't even know me. Oh my God, how could you forget? And because of my absent-mindedness, I started to notice how jarring it is for people when I'm not listening. So you can start doing the same. Listen to what children say. Uh, try to be switched on as, as much as you can and your teaching will improve. I promise you. Now a little bit of meta example on what Martin Buba called I eat relationships. So I eat, as you remember, is opposed to I you. So I eat is objectifying, using, experiencing, manipulating. Look at this tree. So you know how much I love walks. And when I'm walking and I see the tree, I try to stand next to it and just experience what I see. So it's just looking. It's paying attention, sometimes just being present in this moment and encountering tree. I know this sounds really meta, but this is my experience. And this is what Bubar said, how we are actually using trees quite often. And this stops us from having this encounter or meeting or dialogue with a tree. So when we look at the tree as a picture with color or details or authentic aesthetic perception. So, for example, you look at this tree and you say, oh, my God, this is so beautiful. Um, you are describing it. So that's not that's not encounter. Identifying tree movement. We look at it and we see the flow, the juices through the veins of the tree, the breathing of the leaves to the roots, sucking the water, the never ending activities between the tree and earth and air and the growth of the tree. We also can categorize the tree by its type. We can say, oh, this is uh, not the evergreen tree. This is such and such tree. Like, let's say, an oak tree. We start studying it and uh, all in all, it's okay, but it's not the true encounter. We also can exercise the ability to look at something from a different perspective. And this is when you are present and you recognize the presence of the tree. And that's a different type of encounter. You also can interpret the experience of the tree in mathematical terms. For example, this tree is very tall. This tree is very large. Oh my, that's a big tree. Don't get me wrong, I do all of this. I do look at trees and say, describe their color. And I think you can do it with children because they're learning about the world. But also remember that sometimes it could be mindfulness, meditation, when you are 
interacting and they call it inter interacting with nature at a different level so you are experiencing nature in a different way so you are experiencing real encounter not just using the tree not just um using it as an object of scientific research yeah and i hope this makes sense so let me know in the comments uh, if you can resonate with the idea of encounter so the other quote that I decided to add to this uh, video is um, by Martin Buba from I and Thou, all real living is meeting. So he was saying that when you are creating this wonderful nurturing environments uh, or relationality, as they call it in the EYLF, we minimize this um, I eat yeah, or monologic relationships and we promote I you encounters so we create this environments where children feel valued empowered to engage authentically with their world we create the sense of presence of spirituality so you might not remember all these terms i though or i ich do um, but you might remember that he was saying that i eat is not perfect yeah but i you is perfect right so that's what we need to consider so authentic meeting, authentic encounter is what we are looking for in relationships with children. Uh, and the opposite is using, manipulating, experiencing, for example, guiding their behavior, but in a way that you discipline children. So that's I eat relationships. While if you work with a child together and you don't look at behavior separate from child personality, you don't try to fix the child, then you are encountering the child. A few more things, and that's going to be the end of this um, little video on Martin Buba. Play is an exaltation of the possible, he said. Several educational theorists uh, talked about play, but I think uh, it's a very spiritual way to look at play as dialogue as well so children truly are involved in play if you um an early childhood teacher you, you watch children playing you will see that it's true engagement it's true encounter of children so our role is not to disturb it right so and to uh, observe it and be really present and watch it with care uh, so look at it as relationality as dialogue and important interaction between humans if children invited you into play, remember, try not to manipulate them or use them. Try not to break this beautiful connection, um, beautiful reciprocity, spirituality of the moment. Be present. So a few things you can continue learning. For example, Lev Vygotsky was also talking about play as an important symbolic um, encounter, I would say. And Paulo Freire uh, is one of my favorite philosophers. He was talking a lot about power and how uh, power relationships are inevitable, but we need to be aware of when we dominate uh, over children or their play. So that's the end of today's session. Thank you very much. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think about Martin Buba. Was it a little bit too metaphysical? And if you like to watch more videos on modern and uh, interesting, unusual philosophers, so we can go beyond Piaget and Vygotsky, and I can introduce some other philosophers to you, and we can all learn together.